kama si afa ndike kwa nini narudi home kwa casket bro tulia mbona ukuniambia fara mam mbona ukuniambia mimi ukini zaidi bila nataka mimi nitakujenga evans <laughs> there are rumors that you have another family well this is my family and i think it's one senior sergeant fara To get the pit as your skis are tuned, dial star 811 star 397 hash. You may be in the pit. You do not see how you could get out. But the good news is that you do not have to get by yourself. The most high God is about to lift you out. He's about to turn the medical report. He's about to free you. He's about to open new doors, bringing new opportunities, new relationships. The pit is not your destination. Get ready to rise. To get the pit, dial star 811 star 397 hash. Star 811 star 397 hash. Ukiwa dereva, usalama wa abiria uliobeba uko mikononi mwako. Usiendeshe gari kama umechoka ama umelewa na hakikisha unazingatia kasi iliyoidhinishwa. Usalama barabarani unaanza na wewe. Ujumbe huu unaletwa kwako na Kenya National Highways Authority. Quality Highways, Better Connections. day two of the new year uh, of the Lord 2023. Good evening and welcome to KBC Prime Edition. Coming to you from Broadcasting House right here in Nairobi, Kenya on Hari Thuku uh, Road. Our top stories tonight. The burden of failed rain no end in sight for the lengthy dry spell gearing up for mini polls voters in garissa asked to preach peace ahead of the much anticipated township by election the remains of veteran broadcast journalist Catherine Casavuli to be interred on the 14th of january and mourners line up to pay their respects to fallen brazilian football legend Pele. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Our sign language interpreter tonight is Lensa Odingo, our socials at KBC Channel One and my Twitter handle at Tomboy24. Our top story, the drought ravaging parts of the country is expected to last until June of this year. Emergency Preparedness and Response Manager at the Kenya Red Cross, Vinet Ndigila, says that the number of those affected by drought is also expected to increase because of suppressed rainfall. Here is that report. The Kenya Red Cross is warning that the country is not out of the woods yet, as the drought situation is projected to persist. <laughs> The Emergency Preparedness and Response Manager at the Kenya Red Cross, Venant Ndegila, says the rainfall experience in parts of the country between the months of October and December 2022 gave false hope as it is not adequate to ensure recovery of those affected. Uh, where the rains give an impression that uh, uh, the communities are recovering uh, because of maybe the uh, vegetation turning a little green at uh, some stage. But uh, this remains just that. They are false hope because um, truly in most of the areas the rains are not enough to ensure uh, some uh, uh, substantial, substantial recovery. 
Ndigila says more aid in form of food and water is required to cushion the over 4.3 million people affected across 29 counties. We expect most of those who are affected, they'll continue to be in this situation. They'll continue to, to need uh, support in terms of um, uh, life-saving support around water, uh, food. East African Community Cabinet Secretary Rebecca Miano has said the government is working towards coming up with long-term measures for sustainability and drought resilience. The government has put in place measures to help alleviate the situation. It has itself reserved some funds to procure food and to also do some cash transfers. We would want to come up with long-term measures and sustainable, resilient measures so that in future we can have water and we can have enough food despite even having a drought. The CS led the Pamoja Tungane Initiative Food Distribution Exercise in Bamba area, Kilifi County. And we are glad to have been part of this, to distribute food in Bamba, in Kilifi, to families that have been affected by the drought situation in the country. Siku ingine kwa bahati hakuna, unaweza ukalala. Ukilala kukicha, uko mbele mbele, maji ulikama unatafuta, saile, unaenda, ukatafuta maji, kesho, kumekutwa to unaingia hapo sa kuminambili. Watoto wa mamelia, paka maminyamaza. The county has signed a memorandum of understanding with World Vision Kenya that will see the organization invest in water harvesting in drier parts of the county. Wadala ya county kujenga mradi huu na World Vision ajenga mradi mwingine. Mradi mwingine tuashirikia na hili uwe kwa kwa ukubwa zaidi, kwa upana zaidi. Na kuna tangi tarisha nunuliwa na World Vision ya mbao na beba lita eh, laki mbili na hamsini yeah. ili tuweze kupiga maji ya ende kwa watu huko mashinani. Uh, our annual investment in, in this county is about 480 million uh, 480 million uh, Kenya shillings, uh, which if you project that into the next uh, three or four years is a significant contribution. Nancy Okware, Prime Edition. On to Jackie Wambiru's report now. The United Democratic Movement Party leader Ali Roba is calling for peace and political tolerance ahead of the Garissa Township by-elections. Roba, who, whose UDM party was, will field a candidate in the mini poll, says that politics should not be about it enmity, but about competition of ideas. Here is that report. As voters in Garissa Township constituency prepare for a by-election on the 5th of January, the electorate has been challenged to maintain peace before and after the polls. We took on a uh, by-election Garissa Township. Inafaa kufanyika bila uhasama mingi. Mufanye program yenu kwa hizi sikuchache baki kwa njia amani. Mweze kupiga kura kwa njia amani. Speaking in Sankuri Ward, UDM party leader and Mandera Senator Ali Roba said that politics was not about enmity but competition. Nataka kuhakikisha uchuki, uhasama, mambo ya kufanya siasa na ghadhabu nyingi tunataka viongozi wapunguze watu wafanye siasa kwa upendo mwingi kama mandugu siasa itakuja na itaenda. The January 5th by-election has attracted a total of eight candidates. Others set to hold by-elections are El Geo Marakwet for the member of Senate to replace Kiptumba Murkomen, who was appointed the Transport and Infrastructure Cabinet Secretary. Kandara constituency will also hold a by-election after the immediate former member of Parliament, Ali Swahome, was appointed as a CS Water and Sanitation. <laughs> Residents of Shela Ward in Lamu County are also scheduled for a by-election on January 5th to elect an MCA. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, Moranga Governor Erongo Kangata has urged Kenyans to continue embracing peace and supporting his administration in an effort to deliver on election pledges. <laughs> As people of Muranga, we are so proud of the contribution we have done to bring democracy in this Republic of Kenya. He lauded Kenyans for exhibiting high levels of democracy and peace during last year's general elections. Reporting for Prime Edition, I'm Jackie Wambiro. Now, the late legendary news anchor Catherine Kasavuli will be laid to rest on the 14th of January 2023 at her home in Zululu. That's in Vihiga County. The funeral service in her honor will be held on the 12th of January at Friends International Church. That's along Gong Road right here in Nairobi, Kenya. The family will hold a fans drive uh, on Saturday, uh, that's around the corner, the seventh uh, day of this week, at the United Kenya Club. It begins around about 5 p.m. That's a good time when people have left the offices. Um, and the whole idea is to, you know, raise funds to offset the hospit hospital bills. Uh, that is estimated currently uh, at 4 million shillings thereabout. Uh, remember, Kasavoli died uh, Thursday of last week at the Kenyatta National Hospital where she was battling uh, cervical cancer. Well, just to emphasize that the family is, you know, appealing to friends, colleagues, and the public to uh, help the family so that they can facilitate and give the queen of television a befitting send-off. Now, let's move on to another story. The body of the late Pope Emeritus, Benedict XVI, is lying in state at the Vatican with thousands of mourners streaming in for viewing. Catholic faithful in their numbers turned up at the St. Paul's Basilica Monday morning as they sought to pay their last respects. The Pope died on New Year's Eve at aged 95, almost a decade after he resigned from the papacy due to ill health. Pope Francis expected to lead the funeral service of the late Pope on Thursday. His body is lying in state for the next three days at the Vatican and Catholic faithful from across the world will get the opportunity to view the body as they pay their last respects. Monday morning, the procession from his Mata Ecclesiae Monastery residence in the Vatican to the St. Paul's Basilica. <laughs> Clothed in a white cassock and a red papal morning robe, the Pope Emeritus was prepared, ready for viewing by eager crowds that kept surging. His body displayed on an open casket, an exercise that will go on for three days until 7 p.m. each evening. The funeral will take place in St. Peter's Square before the Pope Emeritus is laid to rest in the tombs beneath the Basilica. Tributes have poured in from around the world and the funeral is expected to draw crowds of thousands. Details of a guest list have not been released, but the Vatican has said that it will include delegations from Italy and Benedict's native Germany. Pope Francis will become the first Pope in Roman Catholic history to bury his predecessor. John Jacob Curie, Prime Edition. A night guard was Monday killed at a supermarket in Tala Market, Machakos County. Confirming the incident, Matungulu OCPD Peter Aumundi said a gang of criminals invaded the supermarket, dug through its wall, 
and ransacked the cash deposit box before making away with an unknown amount of money as well as several other items. Ben Chumba is on Crime Watch. In a well-calculated move, an unknown number of robbers attacked a supermarket in Tala Market, Machakos County, killing a security guard and walking away with a known amount of money. Leo asibui tumepata kilio kingi, wachimani wetu mzuri kijana mzuri, ame wawa bure. Ame uliwa, kinyama, ni kijana mdogo, alikuwa natafutia familia yake. Confirming the incident, Matungulu OCPD Peter Omondi said police have launched investigations into the matter with the body of the watchman taken to Kangundo Hospital Mochari. Uo kijana meuliwa hapa alikuwa sikale, alikuwa kijana mutulifu sana na mtuwana mambo mingi. Tumekataa hiyo maleno kabisa. Natataka hii kitu ifanyiwa uchunguzi mpaka wale wanyafanya hiyo jambo, waweze kushikwa na waweze kufuatiliwa mkondo wa kishalia. Tala member of county assembly Jackson Daka, while condemning the incident, said the incident comes just a fortnight after after another security guard was killed outside the church in a near similar fashion. Tumechoka kwa muda wiki mbili tumepoteza watu wetu wa watchman wawili. Na tuko na police station, tuko na tuko na OCPD na tuko na DCIO. Na tunaomba kwa haraka waondoke mara moja tuletewe wengine wameshindwa na kazi tunauliza serikali angalia hii maneno ya security ile iko hapa tala na matongolo at large at least tuweze kupatiwa watu wanajua vile wanalinda mwananchi hatuwezi kaa tukila tala tukikaa mtu ameuliwa mahali fulani Ben Chumba Prime Edition Kenyans across the country continue streaming to entertainment sports to mark the new year 2023 in the coastal town of Mombasa, public beaches are still teeming with revelers as hotels and clubs record full bookings. Kenyans have also remained cautiously optimistic that the new year will bring better tidings. Hundreds of Kenyans in Mombasa thronged public beaches and tourist resort hotels to celebrate the new year in style. <laughs> Most of the revelers on the beaches were engaged in water sports, camel rides and sunbathing along the shorelines of beaches. Kenyans have expressed optimism that the new year will bring good tidings as compared to 2022 where households were hit by hard economic times due to runaway inflation. Watu ni wengi sana kuliko last year. Expressions zangu naona naomba Mungu ani biashara yangu itafunguka, kazi yangu itakuwa poa. Nita make another step in life. Highlighting an increase in both domestic and international tourists frequenting recreation facilities, visitors have been urged to observe responsible tourism by not littering the beaches. Tuangalie pia safety ya usafi. Hawa visitors mnakuja huko katika ufu wetu. Do not dump. Usitupe taka. Jacqueline Osharia for Prime Edition. Now a section of music artists in Migori County want government piracy. In the sector, the artists say that there is a need to legislate laws that will effectively protect them against infringement of copyrights. <laughs> Hundreds of Kenyans in Mombasa thronged public beaches and tourist resort hotels to celebrate the New Year in style. <laughs> Rongo, Migori County. The young and old dance to their favorite tunes to celebrate their New Year. However, behind the tunes is a dejected lot. Artists are agitating for protection against illicit practices such as piracy. The artists say despite dominating the airwaves, their music is not paying. Ni ngumu kwa sababu unazatoa wimbo kama una support hiyo wimbo inalala. Sina producer kama viongozi kama sisi. Tunaona ya kwamba na mwasma pola buor so kila wakati tukwe una hii hii 
vitendo vile inaendelea. Ni jukumu kwetu kama viongozi tuinue watu wetu, mavijana wetu na talent zao. They called on the county government of Migori to establish links through which they can be incorporated into various activities during long holidays to entertain and educate learners through music and arts. Andrew Kero for Prime Edition. Okay, now over 2,000 squatters from Kapedo, Moriam and Lokichogyo villages in Turkana Camp, Nakuru County have benefited from free medical camp and assorted food items as well as clothing. The squatters who have resided in the area for over 30 years are in dire need of water, food, as well as Medicare. They also want the government in the long run to build schools and hospitals and open up the villages by building roads. Achola Simon with the details of this story. Located in the remote areas of Elementaita in Akuru County is a disputed parcel of land and on it are over 2,000 squatters calling the place home. The group fled to Kana County over 30 years ago due to runaway insecurity fueled by cattle rustling. They say life is hard here and they are in constant need to social amenities. Barabara ni mbaya, hakuna vila waneza fikishwa. Maramingi tumepoteza watu, tumepoteza wa mama, tumewazika mali hapa. Maini haya ambayo tuko, hatuna hospitali yenye hiko karibu. Hospitali yenye hiko karibu, hiko takriba ni kama kilomita kumi kuanzia hapa na ni Oljorai Health Center. Today, a good Samaritan has brought them some much needed relief. There is a lot of eye infection. It cuts across from the adults, from the pediatrics to the adults. There's also a lot of amoebiasis. There's also uh, some diseases like hypertension, which, uh, as we see the patients, they, some of them don't even know they have that hypertension. Newton, whose God will provide organization, helps the less fortunate, says the government should listen to the voices and respond to their cries for help. This place needs... Um, clean water, this place need uh, the nearby school, this place need like a health center. Because these people are living here, even though this, this is not their land, as per the information. But they are still Kenyans, they are still our children. Well, that story brings us to our first break right here on Prime Edition. When we come back, we will be telling you what the COVID situation is like. Do stay with us. Wachua mamili leo na Loto Moto Chezo kianzia na shilingi hamsini Na ushinde milioni mbili kila siku Kucheza ni rahisi zaidi Kwenye Mpesa, chakua lipa na Mpesa Paybill number, weka 75-70-70 Account number, andika neno Loto Kisha, weka star Alafu nambari yako ya simu Kwenye amount, weka kiwango chuchote cha pesa Kuanzia shilingi hamsini, hadi shilingi elfu mbili Lipa na usubiri draw. Makinika papa hapa ili utimize ndoto zako na loto moto. Cheza kwa kuwajibika. Mchezo huu ni wazi kwa watu walio na umri wa miaka kumina minane na zaidi. Ujumbe huu umedhilishwa na BCLB. Cheza loto moto. Shinda pesa moto moto. Next on Mpakani. kama si afandi ke kwa nini narudi home kwa casket bro tulia mbona ukuniambia fara mam mbona ukuniambia mimi ukini saidi vile nataka mimi nitakujenga evans <laughs> there are rumors that you have another family well this is my family and i think it's one tena saja fara in charge of the team A man's death has condemned them to live a rivalry because of their father. He killed my brother 
he stayed with his land and with his wife? Or did you forget how my brother Tulio Irazabal died? I dare you to kiss me again. What we feel is too strong to just let it go. Your wife is cheating on you! Shut up! Who is your lover? Tell me why last night you... ...inside our house, kissing the veterinarian. I have fallen in love with another man. Three love affairs that will be challenged. The three will manage to get ahead. Their magnificence, their passion and strength. Las Bandidas. Welcome back our socials at KBC Channel 1, my Twitter handle at Tomboy24. Differences have emerged among residents of Kericho and Bomet counties over the construction of a 6 billion shilling national referral hospital. The construction of the hospital, which is expected to serve the South Rift region, was set to commence in 2014, but was delayed due to the unavailability of funds. Locals are now divided on where the facility should be built. The county government of Kirijo, under the leadership of Governor Paul Chipkoni, donated a 100-acre land for the project at Londiani after it was endorsed in a public participation exercise which was conducted at Kirijo Teachers Training College. Residents of Bomet County are now opposed to the construction of the facility in Londiani saying it is at the farthest end of Kirichu County. They want a new public participation exercise to be carried out, claiming that they were not part of the previous one. Jacqueline Osharia for Prime Edition. Now, countries have continued to raise concern with others issuing directives to screen travelers from China for COVID-19. This follows China's move to relax containment measures, including allowing free movement from the 8th of January 2023. Morocco has banned all arrivals from China beginning tomorrow. Uh, that's probably the 3rd of January. The country has been experiencing a surge in COVID-19 infections with officials faulted for what has been termed as lack of an adequate and transparent data. China announced a week ago that it will let people travel more freely after three years of restrictions. The directive that has elicited a backlash across the globe will see inbound travelers not being subjected to quarantine on arrival from the 8th of January 2023 onwards. However, the country's ongoing COVID-19 surge has sparked fears across the globe. China is reporting about 5,000 cases a day, but analysts say such numbers are vastly undercounted and the daily caseload may be closer to a million. The numbers and the relaxation of measures are seen countries such as the US, Italy, Japan, Taiwan, India, France, Britain, Australia and Spain impose a negative test requirement for travelers from China. The U.S. said a lack of adequate and transparent COVID-19 data in China had contributed to the decision. Morocco, on the other hand, will impose a ban on people arriving from China from the 3rd of January 2023. Morocco becomes the first African country to introduce restrictions. Nancy Okware, Prime Edition. James Gishuru would hold fort and step down for Jomo Kenyatta during critical times in Kenya's struggle for independence from the British colonial rule. As a result of his loyalty, Kenyatta would always have a special regard and government position for Gishuru. Tonight, in our Monday segment, the cabinet 
we focus on the late James Samuel Gishuru, one of the founders of Kanu. Born in 1914 in Dogoto, Kiambu, his parents were among the first Kenya Africans to become Christians, having been converted at Church of Scotland Mission, Kikuyu. Kishoro chose to follow his father's footsteps and trained as a teacher at Makerere, where he graduated in 1934 with a diploma in education. He returned to teach his alma mater, Alliance High School, before later on becoming the headmaster of Church of Scotland Mission School in Kikuyu. Some of the students he taught at Alliance included Jackson Angaine, Oginga Odinga, Charles Jonjo, Jeremiah Nyaga and Ronald Ngala. By now, Gishuru had developed an interest in politics in 1944. He, Harith Huku, Francis Hamese, Joseph Utiende, and WWW Awari set up a new party, the Kenya Africa Study Union, CASU, whose name would later be changed to Kenya Africa Union, with Gishoro as the party president. In September 1946, Gishoro resigned as CAO president in favor of Jomo Kenyatta, who had returned to Kenya after living in England for a number of years. In 1951, Gishiro quit teaching and entered government service as chief of Dagoretti but would not last long as chief. The position was short-lived. On October 20th, 1952, the colonial governor Sir Evelyn Baring declared a state of emergency throughout Kenya in an effort to contain the Mau Mau rebellion against British colonial rule. Kao was banned and Kenyatta and other freedom fighters were arrested, tried, convicted, jailed and later detained for a number of years. Gishiro and Otiende were some of the former Kao leaders whom the colonial government placed in movement restriction order. By the time the restriction order was resigned in 1959, some of the measures his old party Kao had fought for had been achieved. They were now 14 elected African members of the Legislative Council, LEGCO, and soon the colonial government would allow Africans to set up new political parties. Gishuru became interim president of one of the new parties, the Kenya African National Union, KANU, on the understanding that he would stand down for Kenyatta upon release from detention. Kenyatta was released in 1961 and took over as president of Kano. In the 1961 general election, Kishoro stood for the Limuru seat rather than his home constituency of Kikuyu. He was elected MP and opposed. He would later come... And from the cabinet's segment, we take our second break right here on KBC Prime. Salama barabarani ni jukumu letu sote. Usualetewa na ukupenda majonzi bila sababu. Uwe dereva au uwe unatembea barabarani kwa miguu. Fuata sheria zote za barabarani ili kujiepusha na ajali. Usalama barabarani unaanza na wewe. Ujumbe huu unaletwa kwako na Kenya National Highways Authority. Quality Highways, Better Connections. Wachua mamili leo na loto moto. Kucheza ni rahisi zaidi. Kwenye Mpesa, chagua lipa na Mpesa. Pay bill number, weka 75-70-70. Account number, andika neno loto. Kisha, weka star. Alafu nambari yako ya simu. Kwenye amount, weka kiwango chochote cha pesa. Kuanzia shilingi hamsini, hadi shilingi elfu mbili. Lipa na usubiri draw. Cheza kwa kuwajibika. Mchezo huu ni wazi kwa watu walio na umri wa miaka kumi na minane na zaidi. Pero, pero, para! 
This is the energy, man. Happy 2023, man. Yes. This is the energy right here on the greatest Tamani Aj. God was with luck and get. No hard feelings, me now they fight them. I still appreciate it. Yes. Hey, his performance was dope. The Lord of Battle. This is the Lord of Battle. So come take a walk with me. Let's now look at uh, a feature story here on a community that lives uh, in Turkana before Karen Kibet brings you the day's sports. Atta Nayeche is known as the mother of all the Atakar communities that reside in Turkana, Uganda, Southern Sudan, as well as Ethiopia. And uh, what they do is they share the same dialect and also culture. The communities. Uh, trace their origin to Turkana County where NIH lived before they split and relocated to various countries after drought hit the region. Her grave is domiciled at her home in Turkana and for decades the Ateker have paid homage to her by going round the grave four times and every time they go around they're carrying four stones before giving their offerings. Our reporter Nancy Okware was in Turkana and she filed the following report. The Atakir communities are comprised of the Turkana of Kenya, Gijie of Uganda, Toposa of South Sudan, Nyangatom of Ethiopia, among others. <laughs> the communities trace their lineage to Kenya, where their mother, Atana Yechi originated before they relocated to the neighboring countries in search of water and pasture after the ancestral land at Moru Ana Yeche in Turukana County was hit by severe drought. <laughs> after her death, Atana Yeche was buried at her ancestral land in Turukana County over 300 years ago. Uh, we mama, hapa ndi walikuwa naishi. Ata wanyama wake walikuwa naishi wanaweka upande ule mwingine na kulingana na eh, itamaduni ya watrukana eh, mama ambaye amefanywa ndoa huwa anasikwa kwa kwa nyumba ambaye alikuwa ana, anaishi her grave is a unique one as to show honor one has to go around it four times holding four white stones at the completion of each round, one is required to drop a stone by the entrance until the final round, where you drop the final stone and give your offering. Kimila ya watrukana ni kwamba mtu ambaye amefanywa kimila. 
mama ambaye ameoleka kirasimi baba mzee ambaye ameoleka kirasimi wanasunguka hiyo kaburi lake mara nne the offering is dropped in this special bowl known as atuba atana yeche is believed to have used this atuba to eat her fruits back in the day beside it is the elepit that contains holy water the community say that the money collected at this grave is used to buy a goat that is slaughtered to appease atana yeche whenever there is a drought with the hope that it will rain tunanua mbuzi alafu kwa gurufu ya mama karibu kumi tunalea tunanua mbuzi mbili alafu tunaulea mama wakati ya ukame tunalala hapa tunafika ngoma hapa basi jua sasa mama akiwana na kuchatia maji tumbako alapo mama sasa anaanza kutoa manyinyi ananyesha a few kilometers from the grave is the moru na yeche mountain which was named after her the county government of turkana led by governor jeremiah lomorkai has committed to build a monument at the site to ensure the grave is not lost as well as developing the site which has since become a tourist attraction sasa hiyo mawe ni kama maua yetu. Ndio hii kaburi asi asipotee. Hii mawe ndio anaonekana kwa sababu hii mawe ni mawe ile ya samani lakini kama kama vile tumeweka mawe hivi hawezi potea. Calls have also been made for the communities that have been warring for decades to cease fire and coexist owing to their shared lineage. Let us remember that that separated us. And yet we speak the same language. And yet we share a common identity. That will inform us there is need for us actually to to stay together, share resources together. There have been ceremonies such as the Atana Yeche Festival to rally for peace as well as a peace caravan festival in Ethiopia. For decades now, the Ataker communities have converged here to pay homage to their mother, Ata Nayeche. And as she continues to rest, the communities are on a quest for long-lasting peace. Nancy Okware, reporting from Letea Ward in Turukana County. Maritime tips brought to you by Kenya Maritime Authority. Preserve our marine environment. Oceans are our source of food, employment, recreation, fishing, shipping and tourism. Therefore, properly dispose litter on waste bins during beach excursions. Do not throw plastic litter or pour oil into marine waters. Cut down on plastic use. Do not endanger marine life. Influence change near you. Share what you know with your friends and family. Report any accident or incident to the Regional Maritime Rescue Coordination Center. Kenya Maritime Authority for safe and efficient water transport. Welcome to 888-BET Casino, a world of winning opportunities 24 hours a day. Choose from thousands of games across live casino, table and slots, including favorite titles, burning classics, Wolf Gold, and The Amazing Aviator. But hurry, one million is to be given away before 31st December. Join the thousands of winners playing 888-BET Casino daily. Play today on www.888bet.co.ke. 888-BET Casino, made to win bigger. Yeah, it's now time to get sporty. Karen Kibet is on set. Karen, um, it's a new year, 2023, and uh, the Women's World Cup, uh, we are anticipating to, to watch it. Do, is it. do you expect anything close to what we 
witnessed during the <laughs> Qatar FIFA World Cup? We are not sure because the men's World Cup is usually more hyped. But mm. we will get to know when 20th uh, July uh, comes because that's when it will be taking centre stage in Australia and New Zealand with mm. 32 teams battling it out for the top prize. Mm. So I, sh I hope that mm. the Women's World Cup mm. will be given the much attention that the Men's World Cup was given last year. How about uh, the Nini? I know EPA is, is on, eh? Oh yes, what's, what's EPL, the EPL is currently... Uh, uh, we, we have one match today, Brentford versus Liverpool, and by the 42nd minute, mm. uh, Liverpool were down 2-0. Okay. So I don't know if they will change the game because we still have time, yeah. but I'll be giving an update later on uh, after the bulletin is over about that particular match. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much, Tom. I'll take it away uh, with the stories making headlines today in the world of sports. My name is Karen Kibet. Now, thousands of mourners have gathered to pay their respects to Brazil legend Pele, who is lying in state at the ground of his former club, Santos. Pele's coffin was placed in the center of the pitch at the Abano Calderia Stadium in Sao Paulo, with fans filling the stands and lining the streets. The three-time World Cup winner died at the age of 82 on 20th December. There will be a procession through the streets of Santos to a private family burial on Tuesday. Brazil's government declared three days of national mourning after Pele's death. Pele, arguably the world's greatest ever player, has been undergoing treatment for colon cancer since 2021. Sorry, 29th December. Moving on, AFC Leopards junior team was crowned bottom-up friendly match champions after a hard-fought 2-1 win over Isambo Elite at Lunyofu grounds in Budalange, Busia County. The match marked the climax of Isambo Beach Festival. Speaking while presenting the winner's trophy, Sports Cabinet Secretary Ababu Namwamba urged coaches from elite clubs to nurture talents from the grassroots. Ababu said the Ministry of Sports has put up a program to return Kenyan football to the elite level under the Vision 2030 program. We at the Ministry of Sports have put together a program to return Kenyan football to the elite level. And that is under the program we are calling uh, Vision 2030. Vision 2030 is about taking Harambe Stars to the World Cup in the year 2030. We want to see our national soccer team play at the World Cup in 2030. Hababu noted that plans are underway for Kenya to host African Cup of Nations in 2027 with a vision of featuring the national soccer team in the 2030 World Cup. That journey starts with a long program which involves developing football from the grassroots and especially at the youth level. That journey starts with a long program which involves developing football from the grassroots and especially at the youth level. We have also set the target of uh, Kenya hosting the Africa Cup of Nations in 2027. The CS added that the president will soon officially launch a tournament dubbed Bottom Up, targeting under 19 teams from all 47 counties. The final series of the homologated beach volleyball tour will be held next month in Mombasa. Kenya Beach Volleyball Commission Chairman Moses Mbudhia says they are targeting over 20 teams in the final series of the season. After the completion of the Zone 5 Senior Beach Volleyball Championship in Bujumbura, Burundi, focus now shifted the final series of the homologated beach volleyball tour set to be held in Mombasa. The organizers are targeting a bumper entry as Kenyan teams continue shaping up ahead of upcoming international assignments this year. We shall have our last homologated um, uh, beach tour for 2022 that is ought to have been uh, done in september but we decided to take it uh, in february after the end of the league convectional league 
because some of the players also participate in the convection of volleyball. A big number of participating teams will be drawn from league sides who include GSU, Kenya Pipeline, KCB Prisons Kenya, Equity Bank, among others. Meanwhile, Kenya Beach Volleyball Commission Chairman Moses Mbudia revealed that the launch of Bundelangi Beach Volleyball Court, it's a big step as the commission targets to increase the number of beach volleyball courts in Kenya. We have done it in uh, Homabi, that is on the west side of uh, the, the, the lake that is, but now we decided to go the upper zone near Port Victoria, and that's why I've told you it's called uh, Chase Bay, where we have a very nice beach there. We did launch it. Elsewhere, it's all systems go ahead of the Women's National League playoffs, set to serve off on 13th to 15th January at the Nyao National Stadium. Teams are all, um, I don't want to call them giants, but uh, they have what it takes, anybody can take the trophy, can lift up the trophy. And um, my guess is as good as yours. Uh, there are times when one is partisan, but these are our four main um, major teams. High-flying Kenya Pipeline, reigning African champions KCB, DCI and defending champions Prisons Kenya will battle for the league title. <laughs> Thank you, Karanja, for that report. Moving on, Toyota Gazoo Racing World Rally Team Speedsters, led by champion Kale Rovanpera, will be the star attractions at this year's WRC Safari Rally, which marks the highlight of the 2023 Kenya Motorsports calendar. The iconic Kenyan leg of the World Rally Championship will return to Naivasha for the third year running on the weekend of June 22nd to 25th. Toyota, who recently ran a pre-season winter test on the Aris Rally 1 in Finland in the presence of Kenya's Red Bull athlete Karen Patel, remains unchanged for the 2023 season. The new development in the team this season is a promotion of Japanese driver Takamoto Katsuta to the solid main lineup, which will witness the return of Elfin Evans to a full campaign. Katsuta, who secured his maiden WRC podium in Kenya in 2021, was taken as and finally, hosts Nottingham Forest came from behind to force a 1 1 draw in an entertaining English Premier League match played at, at the city ground. Meanwhile, manager Unai Emery praised his Aston Villa team after they increased pressure on Tottenham boss Antonio Conte with a fantastic away 2 0 win. The point means Forrest moves above Overhampton Wanderers into 18th and is only behind 4th bottom West. Meanwhile, Tottenham was trashed 2-0 at home by Aston Villa, leaving them 5th in the Premier League. An error by goalkeeper Hugo Lloris in his first game since the World Cup allowed a... In French League 1, Paris Saint-Germain lost for the first time since March and they were thrashed 3-1 by inform Lens. Lois open. Praslo Frowinski and Alexis Claudio Morris scored one goal each for Aston Villa before Hugo Ekitike scored for PSG. Allah, yeah, Allah, yeah, Allah. PSG's last defeat was a 3-0 loss to Monaco 10 days after they lost in the Champions League to Real Madrid where Lens has lost only once in 17 League 1 games this season. And currently going on in the EPL is a fixture pitting Brentford and Liverpool, which is currently at the 60th minute and Brentford is leading 2-1. Will Liverpool uh, pull up their socks and gather three points? I do not know. We will wait and see when this particular fixture comes to an end. And tomorrow they will be having four fixtures on the card. Arsenal will be playing Newcastle. Manchester United will be playing Bournemouth. I hope... Newcastle beat Arsenal. Arsenal, really? <laughs> but yeah, that match has uh, about 30 minutes still to go, isn't it? Uh, they still have a lot of time. They still time. Yeah. So 30 minutes? We can, we, Half an hour? <laughs> ah. I can't say much about it. Liverpool yeah. can overturn this particular yeah. fixture. Yeah. 30 minutes is a long time. In but football. tomorrow, I yeah. hope uh, Newcastle beat Arsenal because mm. Arsenal are currently leading the EPL table with okay. seven points with a seven uh, point lead. Ah. So I hope they are beaten tomorrow so that that lead can be reduced to a manageable figure yeah. that any yeah. other team can come and beat them. So yeah. we will see, we will see. those uh, the, the fixtures the, for tomorrow. By the way, Marakot, why do I get a feeling you want to ask me which team I support? Yes, <laughs> please tell me it's Manchester United. Or I have a feeling you're not even supporting any, yeah, me, me, any I'm, team. Me, I'm I knew it. I'm <laughs> 
<laughs> but if you ever think of supporting an English, an English uh, Premier team. League team, I don't know. please support my team, Manchester Which is? United. Oh, Manu. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, I'll consider that. Thank you, Marakwet. So, we are currently number four yeah. on the Premier League table with yeah. 32 points. Yeah. So, we are doing good. We, we have a long way, but yeah. we are doing good. You're doing good? Yes. Hey, Marakwet, <laughs> Manu. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Okay, you want to wrap it up? Oh, well yes. Done. Good job. Yes. Good job, yeah. That's all we had yeah. for you tonight uh, at the Prime Edition, our first bulletin of the 2023. We sure do hope that you'll always keep it KBC Channel 1. Stay with us throughout the whole year. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Marika. <laughs> Ever smiling as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's my operating word. And our sign language interpreter tonight. Lent Sa Odingo. Yes. And I am Tom Boyer, signing off from Broadcasting House on Harithuku Road in the capital city, Nairobi, Kenya. Good night and God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>